Today I'm going to show you what's inside your power door lock and how it works to lock your car. Now most vehicles can be unlocked wirelessly using the lock. It can also be unlocked using the key itself as well as the manual thumb lever over here on the door and the button on the door over here. Now in order to access the door latch and lock mechanism I need to remove this door panel. I'm just going to lift off the door panel. So in order to remove the latch and door lock assembly there's three bolts along the face here and one at the bottom here. Now with the door handle loose, we can see that this lever mechanism for the handle actually pulls on this rod which will pull the latch to open the door. And then the lock tumbler which is separate from the door handle actually tugs on this rod here that goes down to the latch to lock and unlock the door. Most of the lock rods on these assemblies will simply twist and then you can put them out like that. So now with all the lock rods free, I can slowly jiggle the assembly out. That was not easy at all. So here we have all the components laid out from the lock system. You've got your interior door handle here, which is simply a lever system. You've got your exterior door handle, which is also a lever-like system. And then you've got your key and lock tumbler, which I'm going to explain a little bit later. And then you've got your door lock and latch system. Now the latch mechanism has two electrical connections here. We've also got four rods that attach to it. Two of them are for the interior and two of them are for the exterior door handle and lock respectively. I'm just going to pop off this cover here. So now if we take a closer look at the exterior door handle rod as well as the interior door handle rod. When you pull up on the door handle, this rod will push down and that will push this lever against this pivot point in the center. The same thing happens when you activate the interior door handle. It also pulls on that lever and that in turn pushes this lever downward to release the latch from the hook on the body of the car. So now if I pretend to lock the latch against the body of the car, you can see that there's actually two detents, one here and one here, to ensure that the door is closed properly. And then of course with the latch unlocked, I can use the exterior door handle to deactivate the latch, and you'll see that the door can open again. So now if we take a closer look at the actual lock mechanism, this rod here going to the key tumbler, and this rod here going to the interior lock actuator. So you can see when I move it in and out what happens. It actuates this little cam inside of here and that's controlled by a tiny little spring on the inside there. Now what's interesting here is because your lock actuator actually has to turn in order to lock and unlock the latch, this mechanism here has this play that allows it to do that. Whereas with your interior lock rod you can move this in and out but that doesn't move your key because obviously this won't be able to turn the lock when you don't have a key in it and you're trying to unlock the car from the inside. So now if we pay closer attention to this little tab here and this little tab on the cam. Now when this is in the unlock state, when you push down on your door handle, this little rod here is going to push down and engage this tab with this tab and that tab on the cam there is what's going to unlatch it from the body of the car on the back here. Now when you put it in the unlock state, this guy moves over and this tab can no longer contact this tab here. So when you push down on your door handle, it just skips past it and essentially you've just disabled your door handle. You haven't really locked it the way you lock your front door in your house by putting a bolt lock through it. It's just disabled and that's how you lock your car. Now it's also worth noting there's a little lever arm here that comes off the electric actuator that gives you your power lock. So that's what controls the lock when you press the button on the inside of your car or on your remote. There's two Phillips screws I'm going to remove to get the lock actuator and then I can remove the actuator. Now if you pay close attention to the little actuator as I touch it on the battery, you can see that it moves back and then when I reverse the polarity, It'll move this way to lock and unlock the car. So here we have the wiring diagram for the power door lock system on the car. You can see that everything is wired through the integration relay, which is essentially a centralized computer that takes all of the inputs and turns them into appropriate outputs. So some of the inputs include the two power door lock switches on the interior of the car, as well as the key position switch inside the latch mechanism. Continuing along, we've got the outputs, which essentially are the motors that control the individual lock actuators on each door. Now you can see these little resistor things here are actually thermistors and what they do is they're built in here to allow the motor to save itself when it's overheating. So for example if you've got a little kid that's cycling the locks really frequently or it's really hot weather, well the motor is going to save itself from burning out by that thermistor becoming an open circuit not allowing current to flow through. Now you're going to think that your door lock actuator is busted but essentially it's just the thermistor doing its job to protect the motor. Over here on the driver's side you can see we've got the detection switch for the position of the driver's door lock so you don't forget your keys. Now I'm going to attempt to bust this open to see what's inside. So if we take a closer look at what's inside of your door lock actuator, you can see we've got a standard DC electric motor that you see in all of your RC cars. Now it's connected to the spiral gear over here, and if we remove this motor, 
you can see just how this mechanism works. You've got a gear reduction going on over here, and that turns this little spiral gear. Now normally, this little lock actuator here is able to freely move, which allows the lock to be manually cycled back and forth without bothering the motor. Now when you turn this guy here, this is a spring-loaded gear. As you turn it, you can see that it does actuate this lock and keeps it in place. And then when you release it, it's now free to move back and forth. And now if we go in the opposite direction, you can see how it actuates this little arm right here. Now over here we have these two little contacts. Now this whole thing is coated in grease, so I'm just going to use my brother's homework here and just wipe that down so that it's nice and clean. We can have a closer look. Now what these two contacts are going to do is basically bridge the gap between these two contacts here when it's in the locked position. So essentially what it does is it basically sends a signal to the computer telling it that the doors are locked and if you forgot your key in the ignition, well it'll automatically unlock the doors so that you don't accidentally lock your keys in the car. Now this is pretty cool. There's actually these little rubber bump stops on the either end that will prevent this from bouncing into the plastic. So we're just going to continue taking this apart here. I've got my brother's toothbrush with a wedge shape on the end here. I'll just pop that guy off. You can see that's the slider with the little unlock detection switch on it and we have this geared mechanism over here and this is responsible for actually turning this little actuator over here and then under here we have this gear which has a spring underneath and the spring has these two limiters on either end so that it only turns it a certain amount. Now if we go back over here to the lock detection switch basically what it does is this little tab here is going to determine what position the key is in the tumbler on the door and it will send a signal out to the ECU to tell it to unlock all the doors. So like for example, if we've got the lock in one position, this guy here moves independently of that, and I've got my multimeter hooked up here, so you can see that for example if it's in the lock position, and I unlock the key, well it's sending a signal out to the ECU saying that my key is in the unlock position, please unlock all of the other power doors. Similarly, if the door lock is in the unlock position, your key will now send a signal out to the ECU to lock the doors when you twist it to the opposite direction. A couple more screws and we'll see just what's inside. So if I use my brother's toothbrush and pry this open, you can see just what we have inside. We have a moving contact that moves back and forth with the lock itself as well as the key tumbler. And that's going to either complete the circuit for this side or this side or stay in the center if it's in the rest position. Finally we come over to the key lock mechanism. Now this key here has ridges on it and that key will engage with the tumblers on the inside there as you can see when I slowly insert it so that all of the tumblers are pushed down and then I'm able to rotate this key. Without this being in there this key cannot rotate. Now if I remove this little U-clip here yep we've got a little spring on the inside here that returns the key fumbler back to the original state. Now on the outside here there's just an aluminum casing so we're just going to chip that off and we can remove the tumbler from this body over here. So if you look at the profile view you can see that these individual tabs here are actually sticking up and that will engage with these slots on the inside here unless if you have the right key you won't be able to turn it. And at the tip here we have just a little cover and if you look closely when I insert the key you can see as all the tumblers actually go down and hide away inside of there because I have the right key. Now the high and low combination of these little tabs here are what match the high and low combination of the key. So you can see as the key will pass through here this tumbler is going to move down and out of the way and that will allow the cylinder to rotate. And that's pretty much the basis of how power door locks work on your car. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.